My son Matthew did not look like a winner. He was rather uncoordinated and wore braces from the age of 13 till the day he died. However, in his all too brief life, he proved that he was a winner. On October 6th, 1998, my son tried to prove to the world that he could win again. On October 12th, 1998, my firstborn son and my hero lost. On October 12th, 1998, my firstborn son and my hero died. 50 days before his 22nd birthday. I keep wondering the same thing I did when I first saw him in the hospital. What would he become? How could he change his piece of the world to make it better? Matthew officially died in a hospital in Fort Collins, Colorado. He actually died on the outskirts of Laramie, tied to a fence. You, Mr. McKinney, that your friend, Mr. Henderson, left him out there by himself, but he was not alone. He had his lifelong friends with him, friends that he had grown up with. You're probably wondering who these friends were. First, he had the beautiful night sky and the same stars and moon that he used to see through a telescope. Then he had the daylight and the sun to shine on him. And through it all, he was breathing in the scent of the pine trees from the snowy rain. He felt the wind. The ever-present Wyoming wind that all has to do. He had one more friend with him. He had God. And I feel better knowing that Matthew wasn't alone. Matthew's beating, hospitalization, and funeral focused worldwide attention on him. Good is coming out of you. People have said enough is enough. I miss my son. And I'm proud to be able to say that he is my son. Judy has been quoted as being against the death penalty. It has been stated that Matt was also against the death penalty. Both of these statements are wrong. Matthew believed that there were crimes and incidents that warranted the death penalty. 
I too believe in the death penalty. I wish nothing more than to see you die, Mr. McKinney. However, now is the time to begin the healing process. To show mercy to one who refused to show any mercy. 